We're just a few days into the NHL playoffs and it's already been a bizarre start. We've had insane comebacks, chaotic back and forth games, controversial storylines, and an incredible individual performance that the NHL hasn't seen in over 25 years. It is the best time of the year if you're a hockey fan, so let's cover everything that happened in this video. Saturday, the beginning. The NHL playoffs officially started on Saturday and we had two games in the East to kick us off. The first game being the Islanders and the Hurricanes. Now, if you're hungover from Friday, you'd probably choose this game or series to sleep through, but that's because these two teams' biggest strengths are on the defensive side of the puck. However, the start of the game didn't seem like it'd go that way as the Kings got an early power play goal and Evgeny Kuznetsov rips one under the bar just over a minute into this game. The Birdman Selly is fully activated and the Canes take advantage of the Isles' league-worst penalty kill to set the tone. Just a few minutes later, a rookie Cal McLean ties the game after Carolina gets loosey-goosey in their own end. Then for the better part of two periods, the Islanders actually looked like the better team as they were forcing Carolina to make mistakes all over the ice. But the Hurricanes have none other than Mr. Anderson himself. The Islanders got a golden opportunity, Mr. Anderson is on his ass, and he gets a glove out to absolutely rob Noah Dobson. Hurricanes play the rope-a-dope and Stefan Nation shovels in the eventual game winner. Hurricanes take game one despite the Islanders dictating most of the play. Then we had game one of the Leafs versus Bruins and every Leaf fan had the shakes after about three minutes into this game. Before the game even starts, Max Domi looks to set the tone by getting in the mix with Marshawn but early in the first, John Beecher scores to set off that dreaded goal horn for Leaf fans. It's deja vu and the ride begins once again. It seemed like out of the gate, Boston controlled the tempo of this one with Toronto taking some undisciplined penalties. Boston goes two for five on the power play and the Leafs big boys have another quiet playoff night. Bruins win game one 5-1, Leafs nation is in shambles and the cup parade is canceled due to another traumatic experience at TD Garden. Sunday, Jets Circus. Sunday was the first full day of playoff hockey and it started with the Battle of Florida between the Lightning and the Panthers. I expected the Panthers to frustrate the hell out of whoever they played in these playoffs and game one they didn't give Tampa much. Only 19 shots for the Lightning and Sergei Bobrovsky was brilliant on every single one. The biggest was this monster save with 3 minutes left and the goalie pulled on Steven Stamkos. Kachuk gets the dagger with the empty net and despite Tampa's number one power play getting one to make it a one goal game with a few seconds left, the Panthers take game one 3-2. Bobrovsky is back on the case and the Lightning should hate every second of it. Next we had the New York Rangers versus the Washington Anomalies. After a scoreless first, the Anomaly magic wore off as the Rangers got on the board and didn't look back. Rempy Mania continues to run wild in New York as he gets the first of the game and then Artemi Panerabred follows that up with a cheeky little 5-hole goal to catch Lindgren cheating for the pass. The Caps just couldn't generate much outside of a lone goal and the Rangers take game 1 4-1. The most concerning part is that Ovi didn't record a single shot in game 1. The Caps are a major dog to win this series but if they want any chance of actually pulling this off, Ovi has to get going. Then we had our chaotic game of the night between the Avs and the Jets. With this series being deemed the battle of the frauds, tonight's fraudulent prospect number one was Avs goalie Alex Georgiev. He was a concern coming into the series and after a wild first which saw each team score three goals, it seemed like everything was going in for the Jets. Adam Lowry had a legacy game in this one as he gets two goals including this triple doink on the post that just barely crosses the line. Big game for the captain while going head to head with the McKinnon line. Despite a late push from the Avs, they can't outscore their problems and they drop game one to the Jets after a wild high scoring game. Alex Georgiev finishes with a 696 save percentage as he only made 16 saves on 23 shots. No matter how much of a beast the Nate Dog is, if you get that caliber of goaltending, you're absolutely cooked. Our grand finale featured the Canucks and Preds and the atmosphere at Rogers Arena was absolutely electric. I expected this series to be a track meet, but the scores won't reflect that because of the level of goaltending. Thatcher Demko proves that theory right early on as he makes a bonkers save on this 2-on-1 to start the game. 
The Preds were able to contain Vancouver's big boys for the first and second as they led 2-1 after 40 minutes, but then the Canucks struck twice in 12 seconds to flip the game on its head. First, it's the captain Quinn Hughes doing what he does best as he sifts one through traffic and Pui Suter gets a stick on it to tie the game. Then right after, we had a textbook forecheck from Vancouver. Lindholm, who's F1, takes the body, F2 and Connor Garland takes the loose puck and feeds it to F3 and Dakota Joshua, who roofs it to give the Canucks the lead. Rogers Arena is going bonkers and the Canucks hang on to win this one 4-2. Dakota Joshua really stood out to me in this game. Three points, two goals, and he was the definition of what a power forward should bring for the NHL playoffs. Monday. They can't keep getting away with this. We're fully in the playoff shenanigans now, and as if Leaf fans aren't sick enough, we got Nylander Gate in full swing. The guy played 82 games, hasn't missed a game in years, takes part in practice, and he's still not ready to go for game two. Where's Willie? No one knows, yet the Leafs have no choice but to try and tie the series without him. Things started off rough as the Leafs would once again get into penalty trouble and the Bruins would score first on the power play. Now the Bruins usually run a 1-3-1 power play, but so far in this series, they're shifting the guy in the bumper position down low to create a numbers advantage. The Leafs have had a really tough time adjusting to that, and it shows as Boston scores on the power play to make it 1-0. Not even 15 seconds later, Max Domi gets a huge response goal to tie us up at 1. Then we get a typical Leaf moment. Dying seconds of the period, Boston wins the draw, Leafs get all mixed up in their man coverage, and Pavel Zaka sends a gorgeous pass over to Pasternak to take a 2-1 lead. Just an absolute dagger before the end of the period, and I can guarantee you that 98% of Leaf fans thought that they would just completely fold after this goal. But to most people's surprise, they actually didn't back off. The Leafs would earn a power play, and Tyler Bertuzzi channels his inner Jose Bautista and bats this one into the net to tie the game. Unfortunately, that's a high stick and it's deemed no goal. Usually, that would shake the Leafs up, but it's the guy who left the island himself and John Tavares who responds by tying this game up. The third period was extremely tight with both Samsonov and Allmark making ridiculous saves to keep the game tied. However, with eight minutes left in the third, Matthews catches the puck out of the air to go on a breakaway and then goes backhand, forehand, roof, how dare he, to technically get his 70th goal of the season. The Bruins would press and Marchand would partake in his usual diving routine, but the Leafs get a gutsy win on the road while missing Waldo Willie. If there's any doubt if the cup parade is on after this game, you bet your ass it is as we've got ourselves a series. Then we got game two of the Isles versus Hurricanes, and we got our first tilt of the NHL playoffs between Stefan Nation and Cal McLean. That sparked the Islanders as they came out hot with Palmieri getting a squeaker to make it one nothing. The Islanders then do some good work on the forecheck to get the puck from Brazil to Horvat in the slot, and then Anders Lee gets left wide open on the power play to make this game 3-0 with 16 minutes left to go in the second. That's a big hole for Carolina, but there is some time, and Tara Vinen would get a power play goal of his own to set the seed of doubt for the Islanders. The Hurricanes' pressure from their defense is what makes them so dangerous, and on the second goal, it's a strong pinch at the line to keep the puck in to eventually set up a Seth Jarvis snipe to put Carolina within one. The Islanders are now on the verge of cooking up a choke job, and with the extra man, Sebastian Ajo tips one home to complete the comeback. The barn is rocking, all the momentum is in Carolina's favor, and before the Islanders can even take a breath, Martinuk smothers Dobson on the forecheck before he can advance the puck, and Varlamov thinks it's already on his right. Martinuk takes advantage of the misread and slips the puck home to make it 4-3. A devastating collapse for the Islanders, who arguably outplayed Carolina in the first two games, only to come up empty-handed. Fun fact, the Islanders were 81-0 as a franchise when holding a three-goal lead in a playoff game, but the script for this season is truly insane, and there's a first for everything. Heading over to the West, we had Game 1 of the Injured Reserves versus the Dallas Stars. Mark Stone miraculously cleared for Game 1, and of course, this guy scores the first goal of the game to trigger absolutely everyone in the hockey world. The scarier part is that Vegas looked like the same team that won the Cup in this game. 
My concern for Dallas coming into this series was that their lethal rush offense would be negated by a relatively conservative Vegas team in the neutral zone. Whenever Dallas tried to stretch the play and catch a player up ice for a fast break, Vegas' forwards would be in a conservative position to cut off the pass and it led to two Vegas goals. Dallas responded every time Vegas took the lead, but ultimately it was too little too late and the injured reserves take game one. The hockey world is livid, Vegas just keeps getting away with it, and it seems like everyone is praying for Dallas to bring justice to the NHL. To end the night, we had game one between the LA Kings and the Edmonton Oilers. From start to finish, this was a Connor McDavid masterclass. Out of the gate, this guy's doing spinoramas and sending perfect passes to Hyman to get on the board early. All night, every time McDavid touched the puck, he was simply at another speed, both physically and mentally. McDavid finishes the night with five assists to become the first player to do so in the NHL playoffs in over 25 years. Zach Iman also had a hat trick in this one, and despite the score looking close, this game was all Oilers from the start. So, what did you think of the first few days of the NHL playoffs? Who surprised you? Who pissed you off? Let us know in the comments down below. We're likely going to two recaps every Tuesday and Sunday because of how chaotic the NHL playoffs are, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing.